That's incredible. I think you should invest more in Poland. <laughs> Cześć and welcome to the next video. So since I started reacting to Poland, I always thought, okay, what is the difference, for example, to living in Poland to living in Germany? I know it's a bit cheaper, but is it more valuable or is it also less quality? So today I want to find out and we watched the video why I left California for Warsaw, Poland. One other quick thing, I now enabled channel memberships on my channel for people that are really, really into my channel and want to support me. Let's go into the reaction. A question I get asked quite frequently is, why would you ever want to leave California for Poland? And it's an honest question. I don't blame people for asking. Why would- Yeah, I mean, California is so the best of America. So like the most expensive things and everything like that. And of course, Americans see themselves as the best. So the best of the best is totally way over Poland, right? At least I think in an American perspective. Anybody ever want to leave Utopia, California for, of all places, Poland? Why would I ever want to leave the warm, pristine beaches of the West Coast in exchange for Warsaw's many shades of gray? Is it so gray? The first reason for my move is primarily motivated by economic reasons. For context, I'm the managing partner at a venture fund called Atmos Ventures, where we invest in early stage technology companies. Poland is sitting on a gold mine of tech talent. It ranks number four overall in terms of STEM graduates and first in terms of female STEM graduates in the European Union. Oh, that's It's good. this high concentration. Wow, that's very good. I always thought like Germany is very good in STEM because we have many engineers for our car companies and stuff, but that Poland is even better. ...of tech talent that sets Poland up to be a real contender in the next five to 10 years in a world that's becoming more and more digital. Mm -hmm. Stereotypes about the tech and- One quick thing, please hit a like and subscribe. It helps this channel so much to grow. Thank you. He has this typical CEO walk, this typical um, Apple walk, like, good morning. He, he walks like a CEO already. We tend to be that it's run by a bunch of geeky men. But walk into any Polish tech company and you'll find a near 50-50 split between male and female engineers. Wow. This contrasts greatly to where I come from. Yeah, also After Germany. spending many years in the San Francisco Bay Area and being surrounded by programmer culture. I studied math with informatics and with economy. So I know quite a bit about this. And I mean, of course, there were one or two females and maybe 50 people, so maybe 5% or stuff. But it, it there were so many men. It's both shocking and refreshing to find myself in this new Polish reality. But it's not just that step away from programmer culture that gets me really excited. What really gets me excited is the quality of the engineers here. Let me put it this way. Poland is one of the world leaders in terms of data science, machine learning, and quantum information theory. Polish engineers top the charts on Kaggle regularly, and companies like Box, Microsoft, Google, and NVIDIA are building multi-billion dollar centers right here in Warsaw. Oh, Poland wow. is a bit of a paradox when compared to Silicon Valley. In the Valley, we had a saying, too many CEOs and not enough engineers. But the opposite is actually true here in Poland. Given the fact that Poland just recently emerged from behind the Iron Curtain, the Polish entrepreneurial scene is still evolving. Mm -hmm, Most yeah. Polish tech startups that are founded and operated by former engineers also run their companies like engineers. Okay, yeah, that's bad. So when you see how a product is packaged and sold... I have to say, I find it so interesting because I wanted to be a CEO myself. I had my own business for a year or two. So I really love that, that it is uh, um, informatics, which I know, and also economics. So I really love him talking. And maybe some of you are like, what, does, what is he saying? But for me, it's very interesting. It's obvious that it was developed by an engineer. One mm. of the drawbacks of being stuck behind the Iron Curtain for almost half a century is also the fact that the Polish economy just recently opened up to the greater global economy. So entrepreneurs are still learning how to tap into those global markets and appeal to their customers. But where some Poles see this as an impediment, I see this as an opportunity. Yeah, but more for outsiders. 
Poland is a European growth champion. Its yes. GDP has been growing at a rate of 4.5% per year since 1990. The highest out of... That's incredible. I mean, if you get a um, stock, for example, that uh, guarantees you 4.5% every year, that is not a, not a bad stock. I think you should invest more in Poland. <laughs> ...any European country. And even with the economic downturn caused by COVID-19, Poland's economy shrank by a mere 3.5%. When compared to the OECD average, which shrank by 5.5%, or the UK, which shrank by as much as 10%. Mm -hmm. And with unemployment rates soaring across Europe, Poland's have barely budged. Poland maintains the lowest unemployment rate in the entire European Union, according wow. to the latest Eurostat figures. And according to the IMF, Poland's growth continues to accelerate mm -hmm. into 2021 and beyond. Even if you're not Polish, you can still easily communicate with everyone here. Poles start learning English in primary school, mm -hmm. so the majority of adult Poles speak decent English. And even if you don't understand any Polish, you can still easily... I mean, at least I think the engineers who is, he's talking about, because they are probably in their 30s, 40s. Of course, some of my viewers in their 60s, 50s don't understand English so well, but I think the engineers are pretty good in English. Get by day to day. I've traveled the region, and without a doubt, out of all of the Eastern Bloc states, Poland feels the most Western. It's important to note, however, that Poland is not... I thought that Czechia and Slovakia are also quite Western. ...east of West, nor West of East, but Poland rather is the European heartland. And most importantly, whether you're raising your kids or you just want general peace of mind, Poland is one of the safest countries in the entire European Union. Is it Union. that? Wow. According to Eurostat, in 2019, Poland ranked third in terms of safety for all of the EU. Okay. French and German citizens, on the other hand, reported four times more crime than their wow. Polish counterparts. Wow, that's incredible. The food is absolutely incredible. The EU's food regulations are very strict, yeah. and that forces the industry to focus on quality over quantity, unlike in the US. I'll use bread as an example. The bread in the US is dreadful, has the texture of a yoga mat. We have that same kind of bread here in Europe, except we don't call it bread, we call it toast. Toast. In San Francisco, there was an upmarket bakery called Tart and, and not toast, a toast is just disgusting. If you have toast, you have to toast it. Otherwise, oh, I don't know, this feeling in the mouth, this, oh, oh, no. Teens, which usually had a queue around the block. Here in Warsaw, we have the equivalent of about 40 tartines. And if you're vegan like me, you most certainly won't go hungry. Warsaw of was- Of course he's vegan, like every CEO. And the sixth most vegan friendly city in the entire world, which is shocking considering its traditional meat and potatoes roots. But that doesn't mean that carnivores can enjoy themselves. Warsaw has some of the best restaurants in all of Europe, from steakhouses all the way to traditional Polish cuisine. With over 1,000 years of history, Polish cultural roots run deep. From the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth to a non-existent Poland in the 18th century, Polish artists, musicians, scientists, and writers have contributed significantly to Western culture. On a warm summer Sunday afternoon, head to the Royal Baths Park for a Chopin concert. Or you can head to one of the many Are there so many concerts in this park? Or is it just in the, in the summer? I was dealing with World War II history, which affected Poland much more than the rest of Europe. You can also take a stroll to the incredible Warsaw Old Town, which is in fact the newest old town in the entire world as it was painstakingly rebuilt brick by brick after the war. Wow, that's cool. And even with steady GDP per capita growth over the years, Poland still remains a very inexpensive place to live. Yeah, I googled the price level of Poland to uh, Germany and Poland was always 45% lower. So you could easily say that Poland is just half as expensive as Germany, for example. Warsaw is the most expensive city, but pales in comparison to other US and Western European cities. A one bedroom flat will run you about $600 US, and an Uber ride across town will run you about $3. That same Uber ride will run you about $8 from the city center to the airport, and $15 on Uber Eats 
will buy you so much food that you'll have plenty left over on the following day. I mean, the apartment prices depend on where you live in Germany. Munich is so much more expensive, but I think something like Dresden or Leipzig could be equal. But of course, the food prices are much, much, much higher in Germany. And unlike some European countries in the South and in the West, Poland maintains a very healthy balance between hard work and leisure time. Poles work hard, but not for the sake of working hard. In the US, there's a culture of workaholism and not much of a delineation between work and life. In the US, work is life. And it's made apparent by interactions you have with Americans at social events. A typical question an American may ask you upon meeting them is, so what do you do for a living? Whereas the same question won't be posed by a Pole until you really get to know them. Because it's rude. But mostly. don't think that Poles are slacking either. Poland is one of the hardest working countries in the entire world, while at the same time maintaining healthy work-life balance with 26 days of paid leave and up to 52 weeks of paid maternity leave. The beauty of being based in Central Europe is that you're just a short flight away from something spectacular. After a long week, hop on a flight Friday evening and be in Rome before 9 p.m. Mm. London, Paris, Rome, and Istanbul are just a few examples of the places you can visit that are within two and a half hours of Warsaw Chopin Airport. And if you're like me, someone who is spoiled by the mild winters of the San Francisco Bay Area, you can snowbird at Tel Aviv or Cyprus, both three and a half hours away or the Canary Islands, a mere five-hour flight. I mean, five Leaving hours San Francisco is quite something. Area for Poland was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Poland is at a really unique place in its history where you have all of this economic growth being catalyzed by a highly skilled workforce and investments from abroad. Even our neighbors in Italy, Spain, and Portugal are moving here to Poland. To he is quite bad at geography because none of those countries he mentioned is a neighbor of Poland, but I get what he means. Take advantage of the low unemployment rates, the low crime rates, and the growing GDP per capita. As Poles, we tend to feed our inferiority complexes by thinking of our country as nothing more than an exporter of car parts, furniture, plumbers, and nurses, when in fact, this country of emigrants has turned into a country of immigrants. Our IT sector alone employs half a million people. I'm very excited where Poland is going to be in the next 10 years, and I'm proud and privileged to be even a tiny part of what will be a very big story. I think this was a very good video and explained so many things. Of course, it felt a bit like an advertisement. That is why I con concentrated much more on the facts that he mentioned. Because if I say something is the best and something, it always looks very nice, right? So I very closely listened to the facts. And I think, I mean, most of that had, most of what he said is very true. Um, Poland is very safe, very inexpensive, has probably very good employees if you are a CEO, for example. So if I wouldn't value the climate and the weather so much, I would probably go to Poland someday or would at least consider it. It was a great view into somebody that was from an economical perspective. And I really liked it because I am studied economics and math and informatics myself. So I quite know why he is talking about this and where he's coming from. And yeah, so let me know in the comments down below if there are more videos like that, because I really like to know from people that moved to Poland, why they uh, why did they move there? And yeah, so keep liking and subscribing and we see each other in the next video. Bye.